Hello readers and digital people, and welcome back to GP Reads. I am your host, Grant Reads. I'm going to try to keep this introduction brief, but this deep dive series is going to be very different from my usual topics. Primarily, I focus on shows with colorful, fun top layers that center around creativeness and have an interesting and intricate multi-layered backstory. You know, shows such as Dad and Umami's Interface. So why hiding in my home? At first glance, there is nothing colorful about it. There doesn't seem to be much of a multi-layered theme, and the story is more or less straightforward. It is a relatable series, due to CB19, about, as the name implies, hiding in one's home. Though this person seems to be a bit on the schizophrenic side, believing that there's some kind of entity or entities after him. As I said, the story is more or less straightforward, well, until this video was released. Then this one. If you've been following this channel for the past two months, I urge you to watch this. It is important that you know exactly what you've been watching in that time. The truth about the videos many of you have been enjoying. My name is Anthony, and I will relay this information in the way that I experienced it myself. On September 6, 2020, my seven-year-old brother, Jordan, disappeared. He had gone to play outside, just, just in our backyard, and he uh, never came back in. That afternoon, our parents and I searched for him out there and couldn't find him. After half an hour of searching, we called the police. They helped us search our property even more thoroughly and then the whole neighborhood. It's been almost two weeks and the police haven't been able to find Jordan. But what they did find was in the shed attached to our small standalone garage. It was film equipment. Not much, no actual camera, but a tripod and two small but professional cinema lights. It seems like he tried very, very hard to make you think that this was his house, but it wasn't. He was trespassing the entire time. I looked through the online records of people at large or missing in my home state. That is Hollis Coogan, a 23-year-old citizen of a town about 20 minutes away from mine. Just look at him. It's the same person, no doubt. No doubt in my mind at all. This series quickly peeled into quite the onion. Let me ask you a question. Do you trust this man? They are not going to know what happened until I have the person responsible at my mercy. Then I'll go to the police. Then I'll tell. No? Well, you're not alone in that. If anything, this series carries a vibe of genuine emotion, and Anthony, and I really hope this was intended, is not genuine in the slightest. His speaking patterns seem forced, overly acted and stressed, as if reading off of a prompter. And look at his eyes. At the videos many of you have been enjoying. My name is Anthony, and I will relay this information in the way that I experienced it myself. At the videos many of you have been enjoying. At the videos many of you have been enjoying. At the videos. He's not looking at us. He's reading. He is an actor. Why? Why would a series like this need an actor? Let me ask you this. Do spirits remember how to be people? Let's watch this video together.
what happened here? Anthony said that his brother disappeared and that he didn't know what happened to him. Could a seven-year-old have caused Hollis, the man depicted in these videos, so much damage? I don't think so. So, then who did it? Was it Anthony? Did he see Hollis hunting his brother and retaliate? If so, why would he hide it? Something tells me that Anthony knows much more than he's letting on. In a sick twist of fate, could Hollis have squatted in the shed of a deranged lunatic? Could he be innocent in all of this? This has yet to be proven. But what if Anthony attacked not only Hollis, but his little brother Jordan as well? In fact, we never see any of Anthony's family. We do, however, see our fearful subject cowering and hinting at hiding places. Could Hollis have witnessed Anthony, the entity, murder his family and hide the bodies in containment units? Hollis is mentally unstable. That much is obvious. Hello, Doctor. I'm trying you again. I want to make sure you're doing all right. I know our relationship is professional, but when a patient misses two appointments in a row and doesn't contact me at all, it does weigh on me a bit. Uh, listen, I don't know if you're thinking of not coming in at all anymore, but if so, that's really something we ought to discuss first. You know this, but I've been genuinely happy with you the last couple of months, and I think you've greatly improved your own outlook. Becoming as adept as you have it, recognizing troubling thought patterns is no small feat. It's not worth it to risk backsliding, so please, uh, give me a call back when you can. Hope to hear from you. But why would Hollis's doctor be calling Anthony's house about his mental health and medication? I believe this call is referring to Anthony's declining mental state and refusal to take his medication. Using Hollis as a scapegoat would be the next logical conclusion. I mean, think about it. You just committed murder, and now a mentally unstable person is found squatting in your shed. Anthony, if this is true, truly lucked out. So what happened to Hollis? Did he discover Anthony's plan to frame him, or is something else at work here? What is this? What is it that Hollis opened? Let's take a brief step back from reality and watch this. ghosts. Okay, that turns the story on its head a bit. Was I looking at this all wrong? Could this symbol be the veil? Listen to this article about the spiritual veil. St. German said this word, veil, is often used to describe the crossroads between spirit and matter. This comes from past experiences when human beings perceived a white substance to be in relation to spiritual contact. The word veil was created at the time. He was referring to the early spiritualists who would call in spirits by asking questions and waiting for the table to move, creating a tapping sound. One tap may have been a yes, two taps a no. Often it was reported that a cloudy form showed up during these sessions. He continued to say that there is a seamless and integrated mixture of spiritual and physical vibrations, but most do not realize there is a boundary between physical matter and the ethereal. The elements are electrical energy. There's a friction created between slow and rapid moving particles. It is all a natural process. To use the expression, tearing of the veil is a way of expressing that the realms of the physical and the metaphysical have been breached and the two have become one. How do I close you? Did Hollis open the veil to the spirit realm? And if so, what did he set free? 
Could these beings have really been following Hollis? If that is true, then these spirit beings could have followed Hollis as he was squatting and killed Jordan. Blaming Hollis would have been an easy conclusion from here. Perhaps Anthony himself is possessed by these spirits and murdered his family under their control. The same could be said for Hollis, I suppose. But something about Anthony screams liar. I have just started my investigation of hiding in my home, and I will continue to delve deeper. As you can see, there is much more to be explored here. What secrets could this series hide? What is your opinion on all of this? Leave your comments below and let's get this discussion going. I want to know your opinion on all of this. Join us next time as we explore another angle, one that excludes Hollis in the sense that we've seen him, the truth behind the rain barrel obsession, and a possibility of the home truly belonging to Hollis and Anthony being the invader. We'll also have a special guest investigator with us next time. I would recommend to subscribe. You definitely don't want to miss when this drops. Let's try something different for the end screen this time. Instead of just an image, let's chat a little bit. First of all, make sure to check out these awesome patrons. We have Vexus, then we have Friendly Ghost, can't forget Christine, Dobby, our bard of a phoenix, and our newest patron, Investigator Zeus. I thank you all so much for your kind support. It means so much to the channel, and it also means so much to me. And now, I have a question for everyone. Do you know of an interesting series for me to look into? Do you have one of your own? Leave it in the comments. This is something I'd like to do going forward, a Q&A section. You know, something where I can respond to your comments at the end of the videos. This is your channel too. Any video suggestions, topics, let me know. Thanks.